I'm Kelsey Zeiser. I'm a senior editor at Light Reading, and we're here at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. And I'm joined by the amazing Sterling Perrin <laughs> with Heavy Reading. Hi, thanks. Yeah, Good thanks to be for with joining you, yeah. me. Good to see you in person. Nice to be out. Yeah. Uh, so what are you seeing this week in terms of uh, 5G transport? I think you had an update about uh, Net Insight. I did, I did. Uh, so we had the transport event back in December. And one of the topics from that event, the light reading event, was um, timing and synchronization has become a, a really big deal for 5G because the um, requirements are quite stringent and because there's a requirement to get off of GPS satellite for, um, for basically exchanging the, the sync information. Some of the operators at that event have said that they've been kind of working on how to get through that problem and it was kind of one of the big issues. Um, a company, Net Insight, which is actually not a new company, but uh, new to me and kind of new to the telecom area, um, has a solution that is able to get full um, timing support end to end in the network um, to you know pretty much address this solution. They, they've got um, a build they did with uh, Turk Telecom uh, and they have a, a, a Turk Telecom has a nationwide 5G network with their um, their sync uh, product up to get you know end to end sync through a, a really kind of an interesting way around uh, what was a problem of of kind of you know installing the sync information in, in every basically um, switch or node across the network. They actually build a tunnel, a VPN tunnel across the network, and um, they are apparently able to exchange uh, the full, you know, required amount of, of sync accuracy um, to, to run a 5G network. So that was kind of neat. Um, yeah. They got it from the broadcasters. They were a broadcast company, and broadcast TV apparently solved these kind of problems, you know, a decade ago more. And now it's one of these things where, like, oh, if you look at telecom, they have this problem. And, yeah. and uh, so we'll see. There, there's other ways to, to do it. There's a couple different options out there from the standards group, but um, this yeah. full, full support through the VPN seems like a really, you know, elegant um, kind of way to do it. Yeah, that's really interesting that they got that from um, the broadcast industry and um, kind of nice though. Like, yeah, like, can, that's, I, can that's, I copy your homework? That was a, that was a hit. I'm like, it's really, it seems kind of simple. I mean, not to insult them, but I'm right, like, it's yeah. really not, right? Just a VPN, but yeah. Yeah. You know, and then you would think, okay, well, this is Slideware, but one, they're not a new company, and yeah. two, they've got a, a nationwide network up and running in, in an area where, um, you know, it's interesting that in regions in Europe, you know, it's obviously a very sad thing, but with the war going on and, and just a lot of disruptions in, in satellite and jamming and things going yeah, on, it's actually earthquakes a, too. It's a big deal yeah. to be able to have another timing source um, to, to keep these services up and running, so. What are some of the benefits of the VPN tunnel that they're using? Uh, well, I mean, the main benefit is it's, um, you don't have to uh, swap out cards. You know, it's a cost, okay. cost issue. Um, kind of the gold standard would be to install this, um, timing support in each node in, in the network, but if you've got, you know, dozens, hundreds of nodes across the network, it's expensive. Yeah. yeah. So they're just, you know, they, they put in these devices that kind of, it's an overlay. They build an overlay network. Yeah, it sounds uh, a lot more efficient too. It sounds like to me. I mean, uh, I did do some more digging into it, but it's interesting. They've got, they've got an operator uh, who's who's up and running and it works. So clearly, you know, it's, it's not nutty. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Uh, and then you had another update from, yeah, yeah. I think it was con Connectivity. Connectivity. Yeah. Say that yeah. five times fast. <laughs> right, no. Um, You're like, I'd rather not. <laughs> yeah, so that's interesting. Not, you know, not specific to 5G, but, but uh, they're at the event. Um, but it's a new carrier in Europe, which a new fiber optic carrier in, in Europe for the first time, I think, in, in decades. So kind of a, a neat, it's a startup, um, a greenfield network. Uh, Mark Gilmer, who's kind of an old-time friend of Light Reading, uh, ex-Colt, and then he went on his own, and now he's CTO of this company. Uh, so they're just getting started, but uh, kind of a pan-European to start, and then um, also in other regions, ultimately, uh, basically uh, kind of getting dark fiber, for the most part, from lots of different operators to build out. Um, their unique thing is they've found unique routes into uh, all these major cities. And so they'll put together a, 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 a patchwork, essentially, with their a, a partners. Um, and then they build, um, it's not really an overlay network, but they build a network tying together multiple providers to get unique connectivity um, throughout, you know, say, Europe initially. Um, so the benefit is a lot of, you know, for reliability and resiliency, a lot of uh, enterprises will have um, inability to, you know, just connect to, well, a carrier can't connect 
all in enterprise customers, uh, all their locations. So you know, you have a big hub, say in Germany, but there's lots of other areas, and a lot of carriers just can't hit them all. So this is kind of a, an operator that will pool together lots of different networks. They'll put together an alliance of partners okay. and be able to um, sell. Uh, through the partner carriers to, to reach you know lots of endpoints for for big so the end customers big multinationals um, the connectivity trees customers are service providers uh, so it's a wholesale play into them you'd think maybe wholesale was kind of done and gone in yeah. Europe but uh, apparently not there's um, Still market there. missing places and routes that just aren't you know unique yeah. so you need diversity and lots of different reasons to um, to um, kind of move to you know this type of new opportunity it's kind of a a niche, but could be sizable. They're building a, they buy a lot of optical equipment to do it. Okay. So it's a big optical network built. So it's yeah. interesting. Yeah. New, yeah. not much new, and not many new players in, in this uh, optical network. Right, yeah, that's kind of surprising. Yeah. But um, yeah, uh, definitely an interesting approach, and um, using dark fiber sounds like a good good way to start. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think they're going to build some bits on their own, but there's just, uh, you know, there's fiber out there. It's just not yeah. all kind of connected. So that's right. kind of the, the connected tree kind of concept, I guess, in the, <laughs> yeah. in the company. So kind of neat, I'll be watching them. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Uh, anything else at, at Mobile World Congress that you're looking forward to? I know you had some, uh, you're looking forward to OFC too OFC, coming up. Yeah, you know, the, the read on MWC for transport is that it's kind of like a digestion period. So uh, on the transport side, I'm not seeing a lot of big, you know, big news. There, there's a lot of stuff that's just been announced over the past few years. I think the operators need to kind of figure it out and, and use it. So uh, I think it's going to be a digestion year. OFC is a different story. It's um, last year we called it in, an incremental year at OFC. This year is like, a, uh, I don't know what the opposite of incremental. <laughs> uh, the news deluge. Um, it's a big, um, there's a new coherent generation coming out for the first time in a couple of years. Um, focused on getting to 1.2 terabits per, um, per channel, basically, the, the newest generation of yeah, of DSPs. There were, there's a whole bunch of to yeah. be some updates from Sienna and I think so, Panera. And... Yeah, so um, there's uh, Nokia has announced, Cisco the had Wave announced. Logic, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so Sienna is interesting because they actually leapfrog even ahead another generation. So 1.2 is where we're seeing announcements from several vendors, and then Sienna's announced the next version, which is 1.16. Like, oh, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So that's interesting. They've they've uh, gone ahead, you know. So it's an announcement when it ships. It's not going to ship till 2024. So mm -hmm. I think there's a little bit of gamesmanship there. Yeah. But you know, there's clearly on the these high-end coherent um, DSPs. There, there's a generation that that's coming out, and yeah. and uh, there's demand for it. Based on 400 gig increments. So um, 400 gig is kind of the currency. So anything can get you 400 gig or 800 gig or 1.2 or 1.6. Um, and then you kind of have, you know, you can kind of aggregate combinations yeah. of those. But um, yeah, it's very interesting. So there, there's a lot. And then the coherent pluggables trend is also continuing in, into OFC with coherent routing and the kind of um, what I still call IP over DWDM, but vendors are calling it coherent routing and routed optical networks. But yeah. it's, it's the integration of, of optics on routers. So that's moving ahead too. And there's lots of announcements around that and maybe some new players getting into the market. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Sounds like that'll be a really exciting event as well then, especially it, for the optical industry. It is, yeah. Optical, like I said, has been a little, you know, last year was a little quiet. So yeah. um, these chips take a while to develop. And so, you know, it's very competitive too. Yeah. So when they're they're all running and racing and as soon as it's ready, they're out yeah. announcing and then uh, there's demand for it, so. Yeah, we'll look forward to uh, updates from that show. Yeah. But right now, we just got to get through get this through, one, right? You know, can yeah. do it. Get some more coffee. <laughs> I don't think you need any more. I don't more. need any You're more. Good. No, You're I'm good. good. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Sterling. I appreciate it. All right, thanks.